Gandhi villages that I visited in the month of June last year had 71 plus percent mobile phones in every pocket. They, there cannot be exception in this. There will be some mobile phone somewhere, everywhere, it is, especially smartphones and app applications and so forth. 71 plus percent poor tribal villages had mobile phones, a smartphone, all kinds of More than 60 percent households had a color TV, satellite based. Only 13 percent households had some kind of semblance of a toilet in house. <laughs> if that tells you a story of a society, uh, I think it tells me a great deal. First, our priority to where international market forces are leading to our life. With the data I started working on setting up, there's a big program going on in India today by the Prime Minister of India, Swachh Bharat Clean India mission. And one of the part of the mission is to have at least one toilet for home. And I was party to conducting a study, communication study, to felt need and of the people and how to meet those needs and what kind of communication strategies should be developed to reach out to people. That was a major issue. But I, when I looked at the data, I was still fumbling, can I do a communication strategy for such a community? Then, day before yesterday, when we were meeting again, another set of data came, identity, identical to my data from another part of the country. My data was from Central India, it was from Western India, and also from Maharashtra and several other places. So the point I, I want to begin by saying what a paradox that exists in Asian societies. At one level, we don't have enough money to feed ourselves. I'm not being apologetic about it, that's a fact of life I'm talking. Another level, we are forced by circumstances to buy mobile phones. Today, I decided not to travel by taxi because I had three extra hours to spend. So I took a train from Changi to come to this place. I couldn't reach here, but that's another story. <laughs> My mistake. Inside the railway, inside the compartment, there was not a single person talking to anybody, but everybody was texting messages, <laughs> receiving messages, watching something. And about two years ago, I was in Wisconsin. My professor, whom I was meeting exactly after 50 years, 1964, 2014, he asked me, what change did you see, Bino? I said, one change. Nobody's holding hands of anybody. Uh, a boy is not holding hand of a girl. A man is not walking with holding hand of a woman. Hey, where did you see it? I said, come, I'll show it to you. There's a hill. It's called Bascom Hall. Everybody has to go up and climb down for, from the campus, like yours. Yours is even more steeper than ours. Uh, staircases. And Professor brought me up, and I was counting how many staircases, uh, you know, the steps I have to take to reach to this department. So he said, what do you mean? I said, I see everybody holding a smartphone, texting messages, receiving messages. The most intriguing part is, even when they're walking together and they're in love, they're texting each other rather than holding hands. <laughs> and they talk like that. So this is a very major, <coughs> sociologically very important change in society at a first level that we are seeing it is happening everywhere, anywhere. I was wondering, in my heart so far, is it really change? What kind of change it is? And that's what brought me to sit down and think, 
a little bit. The promised satellite communication gave it to us in the 1960s and 70s and what happened to us afterwards. This is a little story of my own and the indulgence of my own life. So I thought I'll share with you. And uh, slides are there, I'll show it to you, but you know, I will rather talk to you much more. Uh, Dr. Vikram A. Sarabhai, uh, the name could be familiar to many of you, may not be familiar, was the first person who was chairman of Indian Space Research Organization. Indian Space Research Organization, who thought in 1963-64, after reading, reading Arthur Clarke, you might be knowing Arthur Clarke was the first fiction writer in science who conceived the idea of satellite sitting in Sri Lanka. We forget that he did that in Sri Lanka, not anywhere else. When he said, he drew a map, he said, three satellites at the height of 35,000 kilometers, stationary, they put it there, and the whole world will be connected. And the whole world will become a single village because of the communication. That conception was there. He wrote a little more about it. Dr. Vikram Saravai picked up the idea. And he simply said, if you want to push India forward, at least by 50 years, let us use satellite to reach to every village of India. For what purpose? Education, health, development, and national integration. He was very much worried about it, which is still a worrisome issue in India. Officially, if you pull out a currency note of India, you'll find approximately 16 languages written down, same amount. In uh, Singapore, it's three languages? Four. Four. Chinese, Malayal, uh, uh, Tamil, English, and Malay. We have innumerable, but officially 16 languages are written on our currency notes. Constitution recognized that. So he is worried about that a country like this, which has never been together in his thought, I don't believe so, but that's a different story. Uh, how can we put them together? And he thought communication is the only means by which everybody could be connected interlinked network. So these four ideas that Saravai had, he said, I will take a satellite, put in the sky, and reach directly to the villages, skipping cities. And that we will save about 50 years of India's development, will ahead of 50 years. He calculated in his own mind <coughs> that if India is to have a television in every village, it will take approximately 50 years, terrestrial system. But if you put the satellite, you don't have to do anything. So that's the beginning of the story that took many, many years ago. But I have been working for several years in this area. Take a slightly different view. My personal view, which is documented by research, is that no technology is culture free. Technology is the outcome of a culture, a society, a political system, when it was designed, fabricated, and used. A simple thing, uh, at a very personal level, whenever a phone rang in my house, and we were a very fortunate home, where there was a phone way back in just after independence. So my grandfather said, Throw this machine out, only one person can listen. The family should listen what the talk is about. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. You know, the phone should be heard by everybody in the house. <laughs> Grandfather, grandmother, mother, father, my cousins, everybody should listen. Because I was calling from the United States of America. But the technology would not permit more than one person. So my uncle will pick up the phone, he will listen, and then he will, as a loudspeaker, repeat it, what I was saying. Or sometimes he will not be able to repeat 
only at the end of the talk he will say this is what I was saying. So, so why? Because the technology was evolved, created for a society, our number of society, where individual freedom and privacy was very important. Where individual communication one to one was very important. And therefore, it is very important. And you develop a one to one telephone communication. No satellite television, uh, no telephone has been designed yet, except now Skype is helping to teleconferencing and meeting like this, but uh, young men and women in the West don't like it because they don't want anybody to know what they were talking or sharing or reciprocating. So taking that clue, I'm only saying that no technology is culture free. And it is not culture free. It, it is in response to a particular society and culture. And only those people can utilize it properly for whom it was designed. Same argument I further advance to say that uh, satellite technology, in which it was conceived, had a very different purpose. NASA in the United States of America was developing satellite for military purposes, for control of the world, to export their software to the rest of the country. I'm sure you live in Singapore, you must be watching if not, I love you, Lucy, for something else of American genre of television. Oh, is there any American satellite television sir, received in Singapore? Many times. Many. Many times. Many. And you receive all American products. Mm -hmm. What does it tell you? I mean, I'm being jocular for a second. What does it tell you? I love you. And after 10 minutes, I hate you. And third time, it says, let's go to court, settle it. We get divorced. And I watch movies after movies. One theme comes out. Once, either the man will say, I leave you, or the girl says, I will leave a woman. And that's the end of the story. And I ask the same question to my wife, my respondents and many others in India. He said, how can that happen? 10 years they've been living together. How can he say, that's it? And then go to court and settle. So the, it's a, the point is that cultural responses are different in human relation. And technology was designed for a particular human relation. And I argue that uh, it cannot work. Second thing is that it all evolved in a market economy system where profit motive is the ultimate aim. And in that kind of economy, you do not find much people talking about anything else than profit. So what happened? I don't have any mobile phone at the moment, etc. Every six, every 90 days, Japan changes the model. And I have been told in my colleagues in ISRO that it is now seven days only. <laughs> obsolete. The, the telephone that I bought yesterday evening, next week is obsolete. <coughs> Computer that I bought it, <coughs> software will change, technology will change, and I have to buy a new computer. The question I am asking to all of ourselves, myself, is it essential that I have to change my phone every six months. Is it essential that I must use a new software on my computer? Yes, it provides me speed, it provides me efficiency, but what is the cost of that efficiency? What is the cost of my speed? Do I really need this speed? Uh, again, it relates to market and global economy. And therefore, one has to re-examine this issue very carefully in the context of India, uh, at least, and I would say in Asian context. 
I happen to be in China. Socialism, communism at one place. But when I was allowed to go outside Beijing in the villages, I saw people getting together, bringing their food, putting it together in one bowl and taking piece by piece, sitting around the simple cart. They were eating like that. So that's a cultural tradition that communism cannot break it. And so how do you think that technology will break other customs in the country? I leave that uh, discussion at that point because three theoretical assumptions in the context of Euro-American Euro culture broadly, freedom, privacy, and private ownership. Freedom, privacy, and private ownership, all three have a different meaning in the context of larger Asia. I ask often this one question to a young woman, you have freedom, go and marry anybody. No, I'll talk to my father. Let me get the consent of my father. Why? I do not know. That's the cultural tradition in which we grew. It is not that people don't break it, but by and large that is not ownership, individual ownership. Again, the same problem. The term we is used in many Indian languages, not I. And if you use the term I, often people might get up and say, stop this I business, come to we. That's the owner. Then you look at the own property ownership I mentioned to you, and then you look at the sense of freedom. What is freedom in American democracy? It's not the same freedom that I enjoy in India, but my friends tell me we have much more freedom than America. What does it mean? Yet to be seen. Uh, so, freedom, uh, ownership, and privacy, these three cardinal principles of Judo Christian tradition, does not apply in, in the context of India. One has to look at it very carefully. Not only India, all of South Asia that I have shared. And I would venture to say in larger part of Asia. Sight as was one of the first experiments that was conceived by Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, satellite instructional television experiment, in which he precisely did in his best thought that satellites should be brought to India, satellites should be used for rural development, national development, and so forth and so on. And based on that one notion, he said, will bring community <coughs> television to the villages of India by satellite. I so happened to be one of the few who worked on it at that time. So I will take a few minutes to go back in the history of 1973. Many of you are not born, uh, but it's still a alive issue, therefore it should be discussed. Uh, satellite instruction television experiment was a joint venture between NASA, Indian Space Research Organization, and India's Television Public Broadcasting Durdarshan. Then it was not called Durdarshan, it's called All India Radio TV. In addition, there are other partners to the experiment, Ministry of Agriculture. Ministry of Education, Home Science Faculty. So there were multiple stakeholders in the experiment, but the prime responsibility was with the Indian Research, Space Research Organization to carry out the experiment. What was that experiment? Precisely, uh, United States of America through NASA gave four hours of time every day for one year of the first satellite that they were able to make 
operational called ATS-6. ATS-F was the first name. Once it succeeded, they changed it. You meant well, put six on it. They are as superstitious as we are. So don't worry about it. <laughs> so ATS-6 was used four hours a day for one year. August 1st, 1975 to 31st July 1976. Now, out of these four hours that was given to us, Americans have always suspicion India could never do it. I don't blame them. Uh, so every every second one, they will be on my head, our head, our team head. What have you done? Where are you going? Are you going to succeed? Should we withdraw our satellite, give it to somebody else? That was the biggest threat they would give us all the time. But OK. Patiently, we listen to them. Patiently, they listen to us. At technology level, I will quote one line from a, a gentleman who was one of the architects of this experiment after the death of Dr. Sarave, Professor Yashpal. He said, space scientists and engineers have claimed satellite instructional intelligence experiment a singular technological success. They're not too far from the truth. It was a singular success from all angles, technology terms. On uh, satellite reception work for more than 99%. Receive systems out of 2,400 villages that were selected in six states, they were working. It, more than 80% at any time. Satellite <coughs> signals were received everywhere. Power was supplied to those villages, which otherwise would have not got any electricity. So a very small joke. Yeah, professor, uh, you have to tell me more when to stop. I have a computer here, which is can be put on, but not put up. <laughs> so you have to tell me what time I should stop or stop at that time. You can regale us with your story. <laughs> uh, so, the technological success of the experiment could be also seen from a sociological perspective. The gain that India made in areas of development, national integration, education, and so forth and so on. i just tell you in a very brief, the four hour time chunk was put into four language groups, Hindi, uh, because the experiment was conducted in six states of India, excluding Gujarat, where Gujarat also used to receive the signals. Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Telugu and Kannada, Urissa, Uriya, Bengal, uh, Bihar, Hindi. Hindi, Bihari Hindi. <laughs> I, I want to make sure that Rajasthan, Marwari, Nundari. Okay, and Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, because it is in the state of Chhattisgarh. So all these four, six language groups were different, but after great brevity, we put all Hindi together, so we are reduced to four languages: Kannada, Telugu, Uriya, Hindi. And then this time was divided for each state for half an hour. Out of four hours. Another 22 minutes were given to primary education. So we used to produce program again in four languages, and that will be transmitted to 10 to 10, 30, uh, 10 to 10, 22 and a half. I mean, in terms of mathematics, I'm talking, but that was also telecast simultaneously in four areas. But it was not possible in those days to simultaneous transmission. So two hours were spent, divided into four parts, and we will show that to them. And half an hour time was given for a national chunk. Please remember, India was going through national emergency first time and hopefully last time. Uh, the that half an hour was given the national chunk. Uh, it was basically Mrs. Gandhi, 
అనేసి సంజయ్ కానీ మళ్ళీ కియర్ అండ్ స్కీమ్ ఎవ్రీ డే ఇన్ ది ఈవినింగ్ టాక్ అబౌట్ మోర్ ప్లాంటేషన్ మోర్ ఫ్యామిలీ ప్లానింగ్ అండ్ కంట్రీ ఈజ్ ఇంప్రూవింగ్ సో దాట్ వే దిస్ హోల్ టైమ్ వాజ్ డివైడ్ వన్ అండ్ హాఫ్ అవర్ ఫర్ హిట్ చిల్డ్రన్ హాఫ్ అన్ అవర్ ఫర్ నేషనల్ టూ అవర్ ఫర్ ఫోర్ బ్యాంక్ జాబ్స్ దాట్స్ హౌ ఇట్ వర్క్ my responsibility at a very personal level was to evaluate the whole project and i had a team of approximately 200 people is spread across the country who will provide me at least 70 people every night there was no mobile phone there was no cell phone so they'll go to the nearest telex place one just one state has one telex from where they'll send some message then they'll send us postcards and we will sit down take the feedback analyze it very soon I, I, as a researcher i'm confessing today very soon we realized that these teachers were cheating us every postcard had the same information 70 children attended today 76 attended day after tomorrow 80 attended so the variation was very minor in the evening also we found so i dispatched several people to go to the village myself i went there to see what was happening uh, many of the people approximately delegated the task to another friend of his in the room or uh, his in the village say fill it each day there was a postcard so they fill all the details there was a map made on the postcard who was sitting where because we were interested in knowing if was there any uh, how would i say any breaking of barrier between men and women in the village as a result of tb zero but no that came out very clearly women sat on one side men in the other side children in the front row and the last row was given to the middle was the men but the pattern didn't change for the whole year but we wanted to have feedback the feedback did we, we did get some feedback but not as exhaustive as we wanted to so at the end of the year i had to throw through 200000 ibm cards that i had punched the data because they look very much similar there was no variation indicated whereas the other study that was conducted along with this feedback was nine two two women and seven men they stayed in the village for 18 months three months before the television started and three months after the television and they would write their diary which was already written in duplicate one copy was taken away and sent it to us we were going through those data and it was very clear that attendance was reducing slowly interest was reduced among the viewers women were the first to withdraw because they were too busy cooking home and not enjoying the program but the point i'm saying is that uh data were coming and we did analyze the data similarly we have data on children a group of psychologists was a part of my our team from national institute of communication and national institute of education and training in delhi under uh, late uh, professor snehla tashukla who is mm-hmm. psychologist whole team worked we were asking some very specific question one has television viewing led to increase in attendance of class drop out rate has reduced unfortunately i could not find any data to support that view uh second thing that emerged out of it is that the children and teachers will interact with each other after doing the program when i personally went to the villages what do i find during that 22 and a half minutes that was a relaxation period for the teachers to go out and smoke a beer have cigarette and come back after the class you know program was over so there were other 
sociological variables which would hinder in on the way of increasing interaction. Uh, one of our colleagues who is a social psychologist, she is a specialist, she conducted a number of studies and she took Piaggio and tried to understand if there was any increase in cognitive development of the children as a result of watching science program. And to her utter surprise, she said, cause and effect relationship do not develop in the minds of the children before 10 years of age. And the children who are watching the program were 5 to 10, 6 to 11, 12, basically. <coughs> so that didn't happen. But one area, very positive results came out, was among the teachers who were trained uh, on science education, who took great interest, watch it. But the interesting part was, anybody who was a gray hair like me did not take interest. Anybody who was like him took a great. In other words, younger age group teachers were more interested and keen to watch these programs than the older teachers. Uh, personal interviews of mine when I did it later, later just for the sake of understanding, at the age of 58 to uh, 56, I'm going to retire in two years' time. Why should I learn now new science? Forget it. But this finding is not unique to sight. Few years later, when we did computer literacy in, in schools, it's called class project, we found the similar results. But there we found even much worse problem that the older teachers will not touch the computer. They will stand behind the screen and push, push a young teacher, do it yourself, show it how you should be done, and you will give instruction, not do it himself. So this technology uh, fear remains high among the older people. And I see the same thing happening today among the older people when you give them a, a smartphone. They're worried about how to handle it. And in my own home, I don't have to go anywhere to see this experiment. My granddaughter, who is about nine years old, she comes to me and says, Nana, you don't know how to do it. I'll tell you how to do it. And I have to listen to her, and she does it better, better than me. Uh, in health, in the area of health innovations, we did find few effects. People picking ideas from television, trying to apply, understand. <coughs> I wish Swachh Bharat was there at that time. I would have found out whether or not people have asked for more toilets in the houses. Uh, one thing which came out very clearly, this first generation television viewers in the age group of 24 and below were keen to watch TV. And they were receptive to the idea of TV learning, but not older. Uh, I, I, I have no explanation to provide on that. Uh, in the area of agriculture, again, we looked at it very carefully. Very interesting thing came out, both in family planning and agriculture. Awareness level above 80%. You ask a farmer, he'll tell you, I know exactly what to do. You won't do it. Reason we found out a little later that one, the whole program of agriculture in India is block development officers based, VLW based. So the TV will say, you need some information, go and ask VLW. If you want some more information, go and talk to block development officer. And this was something farmers detested. And purely rational basis. He said, to get a piece of information, I have to travel eight, nine kilometers, go to the block. The block officer, development officer is not there. I waste my day and come back and get my thing. But at a micro level, when we started doing the analysis again, we found very interesting thing. If a information was given to a farmer, when the farmer could do himself, himself, he was very receptive to accept it. But he doesn't have to go anywhere. Second thing, if you do not suggest him any ideas which will cost him a lot of money. He was a very rational economic person as a human being. He will accept it. 
And so, for example, just to give one illustration, one time it was told reverse flowing will improve your yield. Reverse, you go one way and then come back on the same way. And that idea was picked up. New variety of seeds were picked up, experimented quietly by the farmers. Never told anybody. Once they succeeded, they started talking about it. So this whole cultural inhibition that people will laugh at me if they come to know that I was experimenting with new ideas. No. Once you succeed in the idea, then go and tell everybody, but not before. Political socialization became a very big issue for, at that time, the government. But people did receive new information about political systems at that time. But because of the emergency, they are listening more to one leader, one idea. So not much could be achieved. But in the process of modernization, Encrypt had talked in the US modernization tradition, we did find some seeds were generated in the minds of the people when they were <coughs> watching it. The other experiment which went along parallel to this was the Kheda communication project. This project essentially was conceived as a hidden agenda by the scientists, not approved by the policy makers. So what they had done, uh, as a, again, the technology, it was a technology project, that they put a, a receive an antenna in a village called Pitch in Kheda district, where they'll receive the same signals and rebroadcast it. That was the beginning of a rebroadcasting technique that was done. And in between the programs, when the national program or some other state program, they'll put some local programs. So we fondly call it a first time district level local television in India. We did find some gain at that level. Participatory communication increased a great deal among the people. They started asking questions to their district administration, district collector, why this is not being done in my village. Because they'll get this information. Uh, the, but one thing that happened in the very important was dairy sciences. Kerala district is Amul's birthplace, where dairy development has been at the top level. Uh, they call it white revolution in India. That was where it started. The people in dairy development took full advantage of television. And they utilized it for transmitting their information day in and day out. I mean, whatever chunk of time, two, three hours given in the evening, they utilize it. And people watch these programs very carefully, utilize it, because apart from giving just knowledge, they were given practical tips uh, how to increase the fat in the milk, where to, how much to feed a cow. All the information was available. But more than that, they were discussing and debating on it. But at the end, I will just say a paragraph. From various accounts, it is evident that while there was a great amount of sharing of common language, information, and lifestyle, the distinct communication alliance, which were being maintained at various levels, permitted only a limited amount of information to pass through. We forget that there are communication alliances in the villages. So, such and such family will go to X family, to Y family, for some information, not to anybody. And those alliances, I later I developed a theory of communication <coughs> alliance against uh, Rajar's network, theory of network, is that these are very strong alliances, where everything is, all kinds of information is shared. Until you per, per, uh, and penetrate in that alliance, your information remains against his own wall. 
and that came out very clearly in our study at that time. The net effect was clearly demonstrative of the way external information related to development, either through official channels or through media, was accessible to different communication alliance groups. So it was not that I want to when I open the TV and get the information. Until that information reaches to the group and they discuss and debate and understand, they won't permit that to take place in terms of any action. Uh, I'm not going to go more, much on communication alliance, but later on, uh, SNDT Women's University, India's first university in Bombay, they conducted the study in the same place as an evaluation. And they also more or less said the same thing. Uh, PGTV aimed to illiterate masses who have little access to other information sources, but it was found that PGTV viewers group is educated, whereas the non-viewers are illiterate. Again, the same alliance. You know, people are educated, they have their own groups, they'll watch the TV, they'll learn it, but it will not reach the illiterate. Uh, the, my, my simple submission is that the benefit of satellite technology could not permeate to the lower, lower socioeconomic groups and poor. And therefore, it has not achieved its stated goal. In the same defense, I would say it was just a one year experiment. You don't expect a miracle to happen. But it did sow some seeds of future development. The th uh, Kela was no exception to the rule that I just mentioned. The third experiment on satellite communication that was conducted almost 18 years later was the Jahua communication project. First time, we said, OK, let's go to tribal people, the most backward, the hilly, isolated people and provide them information if they would bring about change. Would tell them to basically information would bring about change. Uh, this was again very carefully it was known as the Jahwa Development Communication Project. Uh, done in nineteen ninety eight uh, in Western Madhya Pradesh, in a district called Jahua, mostly hill tribe lived there. Uh, again, this was conducted by a very eminent sociologist. It so happens from Wisconsin, Professor Bival P. Shah. And no matter how methodology wise rigorous study, factor analysis, regression analysis, he would not be able to tell me if there was any very positive gain. The only thing you could say that there were only few people who watched the program. Those who watched the program, they learned it. For me, that's not enough. Uh, satellite communication, again, at a micro level, could not help a great deal. The last paper that uh, portion that I've not written relates to another project we work at the same time. It's called Be Real. Be Real, they call it in Hindi, but Be Real. Project in Education for Adult Literacy. Well documented. The entire project was conducted by us in the four states of India. Uh, Prajan Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and UP. Idea was that use radio as a broadcasting mode system, a specifically designed television radio pro program based on teacher uh, based on textbook. And the textbook was provided to women in the villages. They were also provided radio in their homes as a and group activity. They will listen. Then uh, there will be a monitor and a teacher who will then go through the course and 
read the Varnamala book, textbook, and they will be able to facilitate. That idea was that tele uh, radio will facilitate learning process. Uh, my evaluation, our evaluation rather, is that we never were able to test the radio. Reason being that the entire system in which you were designed did not function. Being a little hilarious, but I went to the village myself, several places in Bihar, to meet people who are doing this part of the experiment. So one house I went, I said, I want to meet this lady who is a teacher paid by the government to run the radio literacy class. Oh, that's my daughter. She got married and left. She's not around. This is the experiment. So who is looking after? Now the books are lying there, but don't ask more than that. So I went to a travel village in Ranchi. They were fiddling with the radio if they can listen music. <laughs> so all kinds of exotic experiences I had when I was working on the project, I came to one conclusion, radios are never tested for the purpose of education because the system did not. The ultimate point that I want to make as a concluding remark from these four little stories five that I mentioned to you, is that one of the myths among professionals, producers, practitioners of satellite technology in all three experiments and the two I mentioned to you is that only sophisticated technologies are capable of providing high quality communication for development. I think it's a myth. That only high quality, high technology can help solve the problems of a society. Sophistication technology is needed, but sophisticated, uh, so, uh, but sophisticated technology is not necessary condition uh, for achieving goals of development. In other words, if you put the satellite, it doesn't mean that you achieve development. I believe that social is, technology is not a panacea for social issues, social ills, social problems. They move in their own direction. Technology goes in another direction. Then it's not possible to do so. Uh, it seems satellite technology partially helped bridge the information gap uh, between those who had access to other sources of development information and those who did not. Further learning through television seems similar as age-old visual performance of Ramlila. People did come watch, like a Ramlila, saw it, enjoyed it, went back. The only problem was that the, in Ramlila, there is a moral story known to everybody, it is only repeated. In this case, the innovations are not so repeated. Maybe if Ramlila goes on, television goes on every day, maybe something will happen. But so far, our results have not helped them to do so. So the last point I'm saying, television in this sense may be considered as a substitute at a time when traditional performances are gradually disappearing. In other words, instead of Ram Lila, you watch TV. This calls for larger investment for community television in India. But today, I this last conclusion that I've drawn is obsolete. Television has reached Indian villages mm -hmm. in large number in a variety of ways. And so you don't have to do anything. Mobile phones have reached. The question is the new technology, how do we apply for them? So the experiment is required not on technology, the experiment is required to understand what is the process by which we can reach out to the people in the village. And to 
day before yesterday, the Government of India reported 22,800 tablets were given to the 8th grade students of Uttar Pradesh for them to learn language, mathematics and science. Very soon they found out that the kids bought the software from somewhere, loaded it, and they are now watching movies and dances. So please don't undermine an Indian and a human being's ability to change technology for this one. Thank you. I stop at this point. Please do raise questions if you have. I have not given a very promising picture of the situation. I forgot to show my slides. <laughs> so. Thank you so much.